spotlighting black owned businesses for the month of black history month and today i'm very very excited we have freetown road and today we have claude and he's just gonna talk to us a little bit more about his business and the story behind it so yes can you just explain a little bit about freetown road and uh your story behind it yes thank you um so freetown road uh, Project Eatery um, is really uh, a take on what I grew up eating uh, as a young Caribbean American. Uh, my parents are from Antigua and Barbuda, um, and really, you know, Caribbean food is, is home and it's family. So I wanted to bring something like that to Jersey City uh, because really there's not uh, too many places that you can sit and get a composed meal uh, as a West Indian or Caribbean restaurant, at least here in Jersey City. I know there are a lot of businesses doing great things in the tri-state area. Um, and so we wanted to bring a menu that's uh, very classic, um, uh, but then there's a, a lot of different, you know, things to it, because I'm a Jersey boy, so, you know, I need my quesadillas, <laughs> you know, I need the wings, yeah. you know, our burgers are important and things right. like that. Uh, so, you know, we really want to make it fresh for uh, a lot of the Caribbean Americans that are looking for that taste and flavor at home. Right, right. And um, just tell us a little bit more about the name, the breakdown of it. Um, was it like an inspiration behind the name or is it just something that you kind of was like close to heart as to where it is? So just talk a little bit more about the name behind Free Town Road Project. Sure. Um, so uh, the name Free Town Road Project uh, comes from the two villages that my parents grew up in in Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, Freetown Village and Old Road Village. And it's kind of like uh, where the uh, poor and the rich side of the island meet. Uh, so a lot of the dishes, you know, like snappers, more high, high profile dish, codfish is something that's more local and a little cheaper. Um, you know, there's troba, which in Antigua and Barbuda we call troba eggplant. Okay. So that's our chapa, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we serve that as a vegan um, option oh, here. Wow. So it's, it's really trying to change a stigma of what can go with each other mm -hmm. and mix the Caribbean islands together to kind of uh, present uh, Caribbean food in right. more of a, I'd say, a high profile manner. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And um, just tell us a little bit more about uh, your business and how you got started within the food industry. Um, well, uh, I had worked for a chef in uh, for many years in French restaurants, Italian restaurants, um, you know, uh, places, corporations, and things like that. And throughout my travels, um, I've learned a whole lot of different techniques, uh, but ultimately always yearned for that food um, from home, right, the food right. that mom made, um, which, you know, I call it the ratatouille moment. Everybody <laughs> feels that. Everybody wants that food to make, you know, feel snuggly and, and just uh, like a hug. Um, and I think that stems from, you know, caring about the food that's being made. You know, a lot of times if you meet the person, you might say, hey, I'll eat their food because they care about the little thing. Um, so we want to make sure that our space is made um, to feel comfortable at home. When you come in, you want to stay for a while. Um, you don't feel you need to rush and eat your food. Um, everybody here is so kind. Um, you know, it's mostly my family. I have my brother, my mom, my dad makes the rice and peas here. Most people know him as Mr. Ethan, or we call him Pops here. Um, you know, I have my wife here, you know, so we have just a whole bunch of support. I mean, even through COVID, our landlord um, was a saint, you know, so it, it takes uh, a village, yes, like yes, they yes. say. And, and so, you know, our brand is really home, family, and, and good, healthy food. You know, there's no additives. This is the food that's coming straight from the animal being processed. We also serve halal food. So all of our food is, is certified halal, um, you know, because it's for everybody, yeah. not just like one set of people. Let's just talk a little bit more about some challenges that you face as a Black-owned business. Well, you know, um, as a as a business in general, I mean, these past couple of years have been insane. As a Black-owned business, I think that um, what's really crazy is during this whole time, um, um, businesses like mine are being noticed a little bit more right. because uh, of, of events that have happened. Yeah. And, and, and that's a, a blessing, you know what I mean? But as well as we have to make sure that we're still business owners. Exactly. You know, so so I would say that there are so many challenges just to being a business owner. And if you are, you know, Caucasian business owner, if you're an Egyptian business owner and a, a black 
uh, business owners, uh, there are so many challenges that you're going to deal with. Yeah. Um, not only within your own culture, <laughs> but within, you know, just running a business. Just tell me, what's one piece of advice you can give to Black-owned businesses in the industry of food and restaurants? Um, well, you know, one piece of very good advice that I could give um, is as soon as you can, try to delegate tasks. Um, if you have people that are there that want to help, allow them to help. Okay. Um, because what happens is if you try to take on too much, a lot of things will fall to the wayside. Right. And then you'll get stepped up. So, you know, um, <laughs> it's funny because, I, you know, in music, I hear a rapper say, don't switch your team too yeah. often. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, you know, I'm not at liberty to say who it is, you know, you know but, but anybody that knows the line, you know, don't switch your team too often. You need to have people that are loyal to you. You take care of them, they will take care of you. Right. So my advice is definitely, you know, make sure that you have good people around you because there's no way to do it by yourself. I agree, I agree. And my last question to you mm -hmm. is, if you had to pick one thing, well, one, I guess, entree and appetizer from your menu that you would recommend anyone to try if they're coming to visit your restaurant for the very first time, what would it be? Uh, the curry chicken. Okay. The curry chicken dish here is like my end of the world dish. Uh, my brother and sister, when my mom made curry chicken, um, it was just something that we would rush home for and if it was sitting in the fridge we'd scrape it from the pot and eat it late at night and then i would pass out upstairs in my bedroom while eating it um it's one of those things that is like a staple of food for me um which i'm sure with so many other caribbean americans even people that aren't caribbean yeah. are just like oh curry chicken curry chicken it's just you know it, it's got that caribbean humor yeah. it's what you want so if it's done right just like our mothers and grandmothers and the yeah. way they do it um <laughs> you know then you're satisfied and you'll pay whatever you have to pay or you'll go wherever you have to go people drive hours just yes. to get that so it's, it's, it's right yeah so yep. so don't mess up my curry chicken <laughs> <laughs> That should be on a t-shirt. Uh, you know what? That's a good idea. <laughs> Don't mess up my curry. Thank you so much for allowing us just to interview you guys and then just to come into your side, you come inside your restaurant. Um, and we are excited to try a couple of things on the menu. I personally know what I'm going to get. Um, yes, and thank you so much again. And tell the people where they can check out your restaurant and your menu and more. Um, well, you can find us 640 Newark Avenue in Jersey City, up here in General Square. Um, we're open Wednesday through Sunday, 11 to 10. Um, and we have lunch specials. We do brunch on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and you're welcome to come to our space anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you. And no problem, no problem. And I'm Siobhan from EverythingJerseyCity.com. Make sure to tune in as we continue to highlight Black-owned businesses in Jersey City. Thanks for watching.